everybody, and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. Today, I am going to be working on a nature journal that I have been working on. That makes sense? A na I'm working on a journal I've been working on. Duh. Anyway, um, so uh, we are making, today, I'm making some of these large, like, frame pockets that you can pull out journaling cards from and um then you know still see through which i love that that so we're gonna make some more of those um and i thought i would just bring you along so we can crafty chatty catch up on life and hang out um i've got some of these these are from a vintage um animal like nature book and these are from a different one so look there, there's the different types of um, poop, so you can identify it. <laughs> I think we'll use the other side of that, which is different paw prints, because that makes me a little more happy than the different poops. Although, you know, who knows? Maybe that would be an exciting thing to run across in a nature journal too. All the different kinds of scat. So I have these. This is a digital that is available in my shop. They are called large cabinet cards and they work perfect for this type of thing. Um, I just cut out the middle part here and turned it into a pocket and they provide just a really nice frame and you can decorate them up however you want to. So if you were doing a floral journal, you could put flowers around them. Or if you were doing, um, you know, steampunk, you could put cogs and, uh, you know, guys with top hats <laughs> and whatever, whatever you're doing. If it was sewing, you could, you know, do a bunch of sewing and put some fabric ruffles and stuff. So they're really cool. They work good as like just, you know, you can put them alongside and um, paper clip them in. They're good for that if you want to decorate them up. And I've just printed these on my standard ivory card stock and you can just attach them. They make great flips. They make a, just like a cool shape for a flip, you know. So if you put a hinge on there and then it can flip out, they make a cool, I think they just, you know, whatever. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna make a few of these today. And um, I'm gonna stick that over there for now. And let's just work with that one since it's on top. So the first thing I wanna do is use my um, craft knife, which I have to find the rest of my blades for. I know that I put them in a safe place, but you know, what that means but I've busted the tip off but it, sh it should still work because the cutting edge is fine um, so what I'm going to do is carefully always pulling toward me never cutting sideways like this I'm always trying to pull toward me because then it, it gives you I learned this with drawing if you draw a line toward you like this if you're pulling the pen you have a much better shot of making a line straight than if you go this way or if you're trying to go away from yourself so that's my only tip with doing this and I am going to my eyes have been giving me issues lately so I'm going to take off my glasses for a little while and see how that does and then I'm just gonna you can always clean up the edges, and of course we will ink the edges, which will make a huge difference. And then I'm gonna just go around. And like I said, I'm gonna spin the cabinet card rather than change the direction of my knife. Sorry guys, I'm concentrating. You know, when I'm concentrating, I have to... <laughs> I have to be quiet. Hope you guys have been doing good. I have, um, it's been a while since I filmed a video where we just kind of crafted and chatted. There we go. So don't throw this part away. 
because that's a nice, you know, vintagey paper looking background. And you can definitely turn that into a tag or something else that will definitely get popped into the journal somewhere. Um, if you don't like the weird shape that it makes on the top when you cut out certain ones, you can always just, you know, cut it off. But this is something you can tear and layer with. You can do all kinds of stuff. So there we go. Now we've got just our frame and I am going to ink. I'm going to ink around the inside edge to kind of hide anywhere that I might have um, missed. Plus, you know, it just gives that nice finished look. So we're going to do that. Yep, see there was a little spot there, but now you can't even see it. And then I'm going to do the outside edge too. So I already cut them out. They come like two, most of them are two to a page. There's some different shaped ones and stuff. I just printed out the ones that were kind of like greenish colors and stuff. And I thought would be, you know, would go with my nature journal. Um... Okay, and then I just cut them out ahead of time so that you didn't have to watch me cut out journals. Oh, look! Okay, so I can't, I'm telling you to look like you can look. Our, our pet deer. <laughs> we have a pet deer. <laughs> and my husband named her Rufus. <laughs> It's a long story, I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so anyway, what we need to do is pop some vellum behind here. And I found these pieces of like wrinkled up, folded up vellum that needed that needed some love. And so I figured these would be good ones to use to cut out pieces here so I can get rid of all the, you know, bad edges. Um, I am going to try doing a little bit of stenciling over top of this vellum. I did on the last one, but it didn't show up very good. So I'm gonna try, maybe do, I'll be a little more heavy with the ink on this one and just see. It just provides another, you know, layer. And I wanna do the whole thing. So I'm just gonna do some parts here. Anyway, so we, we we have been so uh, it's been a while so you know merry christmas i know i said that in an earlier video here but um merry christmas guys and uh happy new year okay let me just see how that looks yeah that looks a little better maybe i'll take a little bit of oops the brown too and just put a few little dabby doos around there um so anyway, we the, the reason I haven't been filming a whole lot is because, you know, life gets busy and um, sometimes you just need to direct your attention in other directions. And some, there, ooh, that's a, maybe a little darker than I had thought, but that's okay. It looks nice, right? The camera, of course, isn't going to pick up as much as I'm saying, but so now we just want to kind of pick out which... Do I want the whole? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say let's put, let's put this underneath. Oh yeah, I like how that looks. So you can just see it just gives it a little bit extra dimension. I feel like you know how woods you're, when you're in the woods you're kind of looking through. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over here so there's a little spot without some. Yeah okay. Then I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to just trace around the outside edge of this really roughly because we're going to cut inside the line. Oops. Okay. That's my really bad tracing job, but that's okay. Get rid of all this folded up stuff over here. And I'm just going to cut like a quarter inch in from these lines and then we'll glue it down. Anyway, so um, 
if you've been watching for any amount of time, you know that we heat with wood. And that last winter, we had quite the fiasco with our wood heat. And um, our old stove gave up the ghost. <laughs> and I'm going to save this little bit here because maybe I can layer that into something later. Okay, now let's do this. Okay, so now I'm going to go, oh no, part of my dangle fell apart. I think my dangle needs a little maintenance. It needs a little attention. Um, okay, so I am going to just go around and not go, I'm going to go not quite up to the edge here because you know otherwise you get glue squishing out and I don't want glue squishing out and then I'm gonna go not quite out to the edge because um, we cut off the vellum so we uh, our old stove died a bitter death in it started having a leak if you know anything about outdoor wood boilers that is not good because that means you lose all the water in your water jacket and anyway so that was last year and of course it happened on one of the coldest days of the year um, and it was like negative 27 when all this drama was happening out at our wood stove last winter so we bought a new wood stove we have a new wood stove it is lovely it is very expensive you know, you think furnaces are expensive, my goodness. But this is like the top of the line, super high efficiency, all that jazz. There we go. Okay, so we've got the beginning of our pocket. Now we can do some decoration on our pocket. And I've got um, a bunch of little pieces of stuff and junk over here. I've got some, these are just out of my like Tracy. Oh, look at, I like that already. Usually I do not just plunk something down and like it right away, but. Um, oh, also though, I wanna look at what I'm gonna be putting behind it. Because see, if I, if I put that behind there and I put the mushrooms there, I'm blocking this poor thing's face. So maybe I don't want, maybe I want like this down here. And then just, or maybe I want that on this side. Do you guys have a tendency to go to the same corner all the time? Like I have a tendency to want to put things down here and up there. I don't know why. I just do that sometimes. I kind of like that direction that we're going there. So, but let's make our, our tag that's going to go in there. Um, this has, I don't know what I was doing, what kind of wonky cutting I was doing there. You know, maybe this tag is going to have to come in and out on this side, which is fine, because then this can just be kind of a wonky edge and stay that way. I have a piece of this natural sketch <laughs> paper that I'm going to back this with. So let me just use the edge of this first. Um, so anyway, we've got this new high efficiency furnace, wood, bo wood boiler. And then in a video a little while ago, I told you that um, we found out we were having all kinds of problems with it, right? At first it was burning lovely and then it turned cold and we'd been burning it for a little while and um, realized something was wrong. And after a bunch of conversations with the dealer and him coming out and taking a look at it and making some changes and set points and stuff, we realized that all of the wood, 18 cords of wood, which is, you guys, a humongous pile of wood. We bought this wood and we were told that it was good seasoned dry wood because in these new high efficiency furnaces, you have to burn seasoned, which just means very dry wood. So, you know, we are definitely in lumber company up here. I mean, we've got lumber trucks driving by my window all day long and I mean there's just tons of we're in the middle of a huge forest so I'm going to use my tear ruler and just go along the edges here I'm going to give this side a little extra room 
Actually, I'm going to go top and bottom first. Um, so you would think with all the lumber industry happening around here that people would, you know, know what dry wood is, what it means to have really good seasoned wood. But the wood that we bought that we were told was good and seasoned and dry, turns out it is not. It is not. And it's not a total loss, but we can't burn it. <laughs> it will not burn in our new stove, our new high efficiency stove. Um, it will burn, but it does horrible, nasty things to the stove. Like when you burn wood, it creates creosote, which is this thick, sticky, tar-like substance um, that acts like a glue for all the little moving parts of your stove. All the things in your stove that are supposed to be able to, um, you know, air vent holes and all that sort of stuff. The little, um, the little opener and closers on our on our air chambers. Yeah. So, okay. There we go. That makes that edge not look so bad. And let's, you know, I should probably like affix this to a page because it wants to roll up. There, that works good. Let's put a little, these, if you didn't see my last video, these are from Alexandra, and she is the one that made that fantastic nature journal that I just flipped through. And she very kindly sent me some of these um, tabs that I love to death. So let's go up here with it. That looks like a good spot. This just helps to be able to pull it in and out of the pocket easier. Plus it gives it another little layer. Um, all right, so anyway, we were, we've found out that this wood cannot be burned. The wet wood cannot be burned. So we bought, we found and bought, um, dry wood and it is, you know, premium priced because it is the middle of winter and this is not the time to be buying wood. You buy wood in the, in the summer or the fall not in the winter. So this was not the best time to be buying it. So it was it was a premium price. It was not cheap. Okay, I'm gonna get my signature. This is the, I'm gonna try and put one of these elements in each um, of the four signatures for this book. That is upside down. Look at that frog. Froggy do. We could put it on one of those pages, probably. Just like here where the, oh no, we're pulling out the other side though. So let's go, Ooh. now I'm just throwing things around guys. Yeah, okay, let's do it here. So let me straighten out my signature here. I like to work with my signatures before I sew them in, right? I do all my decorating before I sew them in so that I can sew around things and what have you. Um, plus I can see how I like the pages laid out. So if I put this in here and I didn't like this page next to it when I'm done, I can always just switch this page out and switch it with this one or something and then maybe I like it better. So I like being able to play around with that stuff up until like the very last minute. Um, now I'm just kind of looking cause I've got my bottom edge here and I want to glue up around that cause I don't want this hanging out the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to not glue all the way down this edge. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna uncap my glue, but I'm gonna come just like here. And we'll go around the edge. So we've got our new wood. We found the new wood guy. We didn't buy a whole lot of the wood because A, it's expensive and we're gonna to have to buy it in in uh, 
you know, loads. Plus, we don't have a ton of room back there for a ton of wood because we already have our 18 cords of wood that we bought that we thought we'd be burning through. They'll be fine. They just need to season over the year and then, you know, they need to dry out and they'll probably be fine next year. They're just not usable now. So they're just sitting in pretty rows. Cap my glue. All right, let's make sure this fits in there good. Yeah, perfecto. Okay, now let's just do our little decorating here. So I think I did like these two. And here's the nice thing, once it's glued to the page, like you can make these ahead of time and um, you could definitely mass make these. Like if you have cabinet cards or anything, really, you could cut frames out of anything um, and then put this behind and then make a whole bunch of them and then decorate them and glue them in as you want. Or um, the nice thing about having it glued in is I can now kind of glue over the edges. I can collage over the edge slightly um, and have this you know, going off the edge a little to add even more kind of dimension to the piece. So let's do some little layering up here. This is a uh, baby wipe that I was using to wipe off um, a bunch of green ink from something, obviously. But I really like how that looks. So we can go that. And that down, maybe a little down here more. Ugh, why does it keep sticking to my finger? Stay. Okay, and then maybe a little cheesecloth behind that guy up there. Um. So we've got our dry wood and then we started burning the dry wood and all seemed well for a while. For a while. I'm going to cut myself a couple of strips of this off of this big chunk here. Oh, it's starting to snow again. It's very pretty. Um, but then we started having problems with the stove again and it wouldn't stay... It wouldn't like stay hot and um, it the temperature kept falling and it was doing all these wonky things. So back to the drawing board, talking to the dealer again, trying to, you know, we were out there one night until 3.30 in the morning, Ade and I trying to make the stupid stove <laughs> do what it's supposed to do. It's really frustrating when you've spent that much money. You know, we will be the first to acknowledge that we are definitely, you know, new to this whole thing because we're, we are city slickers for sure. Um, but, you know, we're also not stupid people. So anyway, after that 3.30 in the morning night, we were like, something's got to give here. So I read a whole bunch. I read the whole owner's manual, like start to finish. And um, then watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I swear you can learn anything that you ever want to know from YouTube. <laughs> and look, I mean, look here, we are communicating. So I watched a ton of YouTube videos and yeah, I think I'm just going to go that piece right straight on. Um, and figured out that we probably had creosote blocking the, you know, some of the air vents and stuff and your stove has to be able to breathe. So then I studied up on how to basically take the stove apart, all the pieces that we could and un, like decreosote them. So, so then this has got white edges not been inked. Um, so then Adi and I spent a day taking our stove apart and learning everything there was to know about becoming very well acquainted with the inside of our stove. Uh, meanwhile, because the new wood isn't stacked, 
um, we have just this ginormous tarp on it. And so Ade was out there with the girls trying to like get the, we had, oh, we also at, at the same time, I'm telling you, this was quite the few days at the same time, the day like before we had had a dump of about a foot and a half of snow over the course of a couple of days. Um, and it was, it was crazy. Like there was a ton of, ton of snow back there. And of course that gets on top of the tarp and does not nice things. Um, it gets it all like frozen and stuck to stuff. I'm going to just trim up a little bit of this cheesecloth. It's a little overbearing here. Pull off some extra edges there. Um, I feel like it needs a word or something. These are my little Tracy Fox bins so we were out there you know messing around with this stuff and having some lovely family time back by the wood stove maybe it needs a tiny label maybe i wish it was a little smaller um is this one a little shorter no it is but it's green Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, so we're out there hanging out, doing our thing, having family time back by the stove, moving the tarp around. Got to take the tarp off because it's like frozen down and um, doing all that stuff. And the tarp is making a ton of noise and I'm in there scraping away at the inside of our furnace, which by the way, you have to let it completely cool down. So you have to let it completely cool down and then, uh, then you can climb into it essentially and do all the cleaning that you're trying to do. Okay, there we go. So there is pocket two done. I like that. I like that. Okay, let's work on another one. Um, where's my, that came next. So we'll do this one. This one might be a little challenging because the, the hole is a little small. So I don't know what we'll, we'll have to see what we can fit in there. I think rather than going right along the edge where the green meets the, this paper, I'm going to try and go around this edge, this black edge, just to give myself just a slightly bigger, um, hole here. So again, pulling towards myself and moving the card rather than my knife. So we're back there working on stuff and all of a sudden this little yearling deer is kind of, I mean, we have deer everywhere, right? So it's not a surprise to see a deer back there by the wood stove, especially our house backs up to hundreds of acres of land, of forest. So again, we'll keep this piece here because we can do something with it. And there's our hole. And let's ink. So it's not surprising to see deer. However, this one, and some of them actually here, like right in town, um, are a little bold. Like they'll, they're a lot more used to people and cars and stuff. So They'll get a lot closer, but they don't usually come right up by you. Well, so we're outside working on the stove and all of a sudden this deer, this little yearling is, um, keeps coming closer and closer. And my husband, who's, you know, just trying to be funny is go trying to scare it away. And the girls and I are like, don't, we love the little baby deer. So let's get our other totally crinkly piece here. We can maybe get two out of this one because it's not as, yeah, I bet I can get two out of this one. Um, let's do some stenciling on here though. So we're out there, husband's trying to scare the deer away. It's making the girls and I mad. <laughs> and so anyway, the deer just keeps coming. She just keeps coming closer and closer. And so my husband then calls her, decides that her name should be Rufus or that her name is Rufus. Somehow he knows this. He discerns that her name is Rufus. Her name is Rufus. And um, 
I'll do a little bit of the brown. And so then we decide to that we had remember that we had some um, corn in the shop. So they run in, my daughter runs in and grabs the corn and we're going to feed her some because one of the problems around here is, I mean, I'm sure she's a, she's an orphan from hunting and um, so we lots and lots of, lots and lots of deer up here and lots and lots of hunting up here. Um, and she's probably, you know, orphaned from that, which is fine. She's a yearling. She's old enough to handle herself. Um, but the problem becomes when we get that much snow, it buries their like known sources of food a lot of times. And when they're really little and kind of short like that, it becomes really difficult for them even just to walk through it sometimes. Um, and on top of all of that, I'm going to go right right there. So now I'm going to trace this lead. Come on. Uh, on top of all of that, it was really, really cold. And that can be deadly for these deer too. Like when it gets that cold, I just wrote on my frame. It was down, we had wind chill warnings for negative 40 wind chill. 40 below wind chills is no joke. So um, sometimes if they don't have a good source of food, deer just die when the actual temperature is negative 31 or 32. Like if they don't have a good food source and they haven't built up a nice thick winter coat, then sometimes they're not long for the world. So we decided we'd give her some of our corn and she just walked right up to us. I'm going to just trace a little line here so I know where to glue. So I don't want to squish glue around too much, especially up on that top part there. Okay. Um, she was not shy and she just walked right up. I mean, I started throwing handfuls of it out while my husband went and got a bucket for us to put some in because, you know, there was so much snow that the minute you threw a little bit of handfuls of corn on the ground, it just sunk in and kind of got lost. But she walked right up and started eating it right away. And um, so then the girls and I were like instantly in love with this cute deer. And so... So Rufus ate the corn right away and um, then we put the bucket out and she walked right up while we were doing the tarp, while we were making all kinds of noise and doing things that would normally be scary to a deer. She did not, she was not deterred. She was hungry and she came and ate for quite a while. So then we refilled the bucket and left it out there. And now we have like a deer, she comes by all the time. And then here I am minding the wood stove. There's our pile of wood we cannot use right now. Here's our precious expensive wood. And look, oh, look who's around the corner. Hi Rufus. That's Rufus, our yearling deer buddy. Hi there. Say hi to my YouTube subscribers, Ruf. <laughs> I filled your bucket with corn, so you should be plenty full by the end of this day. So then I sent a Snapchat to my parents. My board is gross right now, guys sent a little Snapchat to my, my family. We're all on a big Snapchat thing and said, look at, we're, you know, taking our stove apart. Wahoo. And we have a new pet. Her name is Rufus. <laughs> and then my dad sent me a text a few minutes later of Rufus out in front of their house, which they just live literally kitty corner, like across main street and down a house. So he said, oh, I think, is this Rufus? Because I think, I think she's been coming to our house too. I'm looking for one that'll be big enough that we can actually see behind here. 
Um, so sure enough, oh, that see, that'll cut that head head off. Maybe some bunnies. Will the bunnies show, or are they just like, nope, they're gonna be, well, kind of there. Um, moose. The moose fits. Yeah, that fits good. Let's do the moose. So he said, well, this must be, Rufus must be the footprints that we've been seeing around our house as well. Okay, let's find another next signature. As you can see, I have not, I've just assembled the signatures. I have a couple of, um, I have a couple that I have single signature journals that I've completed, but I haven't. I've just done some leaf stamping in them. Maybe we could put it on one of these. Eco dye pages, that would kind of look cool. As a background to this. You think, you think? Yeah, I like the brown and the this eco dye behind it. Okay, let's do that. So I'm gonna, um, again, let's back this first so we can make sure that it's gonna fit. And I need sorry guys, I'm I need more paper and what did I do with it? Hold on. I'm gonna grab my paper and I'm gonna find my paper and I'll be right back. Okay. Here we go. So again, this one has a weird crinkly side. But and then I want to make sure I go over far enough that I hit the Usually I'd be trying to conserve the paper a little bit better, but I want, first of all, this was super cheap paper and I, it has, I bought it because it has this little deer. I've had it forever and ever. Um, I bought, a, they were super cheap um, and I got them back when I was just kind of first starting to make journals and, you know, made some nature journals and thought, oh, this has got little deer on it. This will be nice. And so I bought the paper and realized that it said natural. I thought it said like nature sketch. I clearly was not paying that close of attention. It says natural sketch. It has a cute little deer, but natural sketch. But then on the bottom, it says always be happy, which is very disingenuous if you ask me who in this world can say that they are always happy. And I think it's mean to tell people they have to be happy all the time. But then down here, it says underneath the postscript to that is happiness is about having each tiny wish come true. What the actual heck, you guys? Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to ink that. That is fine. It's fine. Yeah, happiness is not about having each tiny wish come true. Sorry, wish or wherever I got this paper from. Actually, I believe I bought this off of Amazon. <laughs> I don't think I bought it off of wish or somewhere like that, although it seems like where it would have come from. Um, but anyway, it makes good, you know, lined paper for backing here. So we'll just use it like that. Oops. So anyway, we have a pet, we have a pet Rufus, we have a pet deer and uh, she comes and hangs out. And now we, every time my husband goes back to load the wood stove or something, I'm always asking him, did you see Rufus? Have you seen Rufus today? But now he refers to all deers as Rufuses. So all deer, he'll say, oh, I saw a bunch of Rufuses back by the wood stove. <laughs> So now there's just, now it's just a, it's like a sub, a subcategory, deer, white-tailed deer, Rufus. I wonder if, if the plural is Rufi. Okay, we're going to ink this. So anyway, just, just a little while ago here where I said, oh guys, look, it's because Rufus was hanging out outside my window, which means that she was just like right on Main Street. So she is definitely super tame and um, <laughs> she doesn't care. She goes over now and checks out my parents' bird feeder to see if there's anything, you know, yummy looking there. And then um, I think she definitely 
roams around Main Street. She didn't be scared of the car that was coming up right behind her. She just kept going. Okay, this one we're going to have plenty of space to get the this in and out so we can glue around the edge just fine. So we're not pet people. I mean, I'm a dog person. We grew up raising dogs. The girls would like a dog except for they do that thing. You know, I'm like, I'm not totally not into training a puppy right now. And it means that we can't, you know, when you have a dog, um, especially dogs, like not cats quite as much, but you just can't come and go. You have to find someone to watch them. But I suppose we have to find someone to babysit our wood stove if we go anywhere <laughs> anyway. We do have propane backup, but propane has become wildly expensive in recent uh, months here. So um, anyway, there we go. That works perfect and we can totally see the moose. And so then we've got places to, let's put a tab on. Let's put a tab on. There we go. So Rufus is not scared. So Rufus is our new pet. It's kind of nice. Okay, so one time up here, some people um, that we know years ago, they had a fawn, like a yearling that had probably been orphaned. And it was, I feel like it was maybe even hurt or something. And um, they started taking care of it. And then it became really dependent on their food. And so, of course, it was, you know, definitely like a pet for them. And uh, then it became hunting season and they were worried that this thing was just going to get shot and they had become emotionally attached to it. So they uh, spray painted the deer blaze orange <laughs> so that no one would shoot it. Because if you're hunting and you see blaze orange, that's your sign that there is a human and not an animal and don't shoot it. So um, they spray painted this thing, the back sides of, you know, the, the sides of this thing blaze orange so that no one would shoot it, which really is, which really is pretty brilliant. <laughs> that is the same color. That's not going to work. Okay, let me go with a mushroom, go with a little of this behind here. It's kind of the same color too though. I, oh, I've got some of this. I've got some of this. This is all kind of the same color. <laughs> this is all, it's all just gonna kind of go together, right? Um, I could go with a bit of that and some of that and that. On camera, it just looks like one color, which it sort of is. Um, let's find another, let's see if we can find another shroom with some color in it. Back to the Tracy Fox fussy cut. Fussy cuts. That's too tall. Nope. I guess I don't have to, I'm not beholden to the one that I just stuck there. I could put something else down instead. There's a little butterfly. Oh yeah, there, that's good. Oh yeah, I said. This um, needs a little help by the antenna here. Sometimes when I put like sheets of fussy cut butterflies through my scan and cut, the the little tiny ones like this, their their wings, or I mean their wings, their wings make it. That's that guy's too small. We have more real estate up there. Sometimes they're uh, that one's better. Their antennae don't survive so well. 
The other thing I like about this particular making the pockets like this is that it doesn't, um, it adds a whole lot of dimension without bulking stuff up too much, which is nice because sometimes some of the pockets I make end up being a lot more bulky, but this is a way to add some stuff in without it getting too bulky. Just going to go around the edges quick because I see some bright white and I don't want that. And I think I'm going to add just a snip of cheesecloth in behind all that too. And then some for the butterfly up there. And I'm just going to kind of shred this around. Like so. Okay. So let's see. How am I going to just flip that over and kind of glue that down, I suppose? Um, there we go. So what else did I do over the time I wasn't here and we didn't chat for a while? I, um, over Christmas, oh, we had a friend, I had a friend from, in journal making news, <laughs> I had a, a friend from church, Crystal, hi Crystal, she watches my videos. So hello, Crystal. Um, she has decided to undertake hand writing the Bible, like writing, copying by hand the Bible, which is incredible undertaking. It's probably going to take her the rest of her life. I cannot imagine. Um, but she's decided that after having, you know, read through the Bible several times that this is kind of how she wanted to tackle doing it next is that like handwriting. So she printed off a bunch of my papers and um, put, some, put some other papers with it and stuff and then got to town, got to writing and just literally started at the beginning of Genesis and so then she called me like a month ago or something and was like, I'm done with Genesis. And so then we were having a video chat and she was showing me it's it was 16 signatures. Now, again, it's not all the super bulky, you know, like how we put all the pockets and flips and fabric ruffles and all that sort of stuff. Hers is mostly just writing. She does use some of the ephemera from some of my kits, like she'll use envelopes and a few little pockets and tags and stuff. But for the most part, her pages are just strictly a ton of writing. That needs a little, there we go. And I was in awe of this thing. And um, it is 16 signatures. Uh, I wish I had a picture of it of while we were doing it. I should have taken some pic pictures. Anyway, I had told her that when she was done with like the first book, when she was done with Genesis or wherever she got to and she felt like it was time to bind the first one together, um, that she could come up. She lives in Southern Minnesota. But I said, come up and we'll, we'll go ahead and bind this thing together and I'll teach you how to bind a book. And so she came up and I've never bound that many signatures. The The binding template that we made was, well, first of all, it took us forever to do all the math to figure out how everything fit. I'm, I'm in search of like a label or something. That's too big. Oh, maybe this one. Yeah, I like that. It needed something else. That's why having this little stash of tiny little things. These are Tracy's kit. It's um, mini ephemera, something like that mini ephemera. I swear if you go on her Etsy <laughs> and search, like look through her mini, mini things, there's like mini, mini mix ephemera. I think that's maybe what it's called. It's a great kit. It's perfect for this kind of stuff. There, there is another one done. Look at that. And I don't know if, if I hold it up, can you see the dimensions of the different layers? Kinda. Anyway, we bound that, we bound Genesis. We made, I taught her how to make a cover and we bound it and boy, that was a challenge. So that was something else that I did, but it was super cool. What a project. So now 
She's got some of... Oh, did I glue... <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I didn't. I was like, oh, I got a little punchy and chatty and I thought I glued the wing over. Well, I did, but then I realized I've got a little room to scoot it down here so I could still get it out. Oh my goodness. This is why crafty chatty, not always the best. Um, I might punch some eyelets here and just hang something. I'm not sure because it doesn't hang off the edge. It doesn't hang out here. So the dangle might just be too bulky if it hangs there. I'm not sure, but whatever. So let's, um, I'm going to probably cut this video off because we're at 49 minutes here. So let's take a look at what we got done though. These two lovelies. I like them. I like them a lot. So um, I hope that you guys had fun hanging out with me. I definitely have more chattiness to tell you about. So just, you know, regular chatty. Anyway, I missed you guys and I'm glad that we're back and able to um, hang out and whatever. So uh, here's what we did today. Um, let me know if you have any questions or anything down below. Like I said, you can find these in my shop, um, which is Musings by Nikki, my Etsy shop, and that's listed below as well. And I hope you guys all have a great morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night, whatever time it is, wherever you are watching. And um, I hope that you guys are able to do something fun or crafty or even just hanging out and watching me or somebody else do something crafty if that fills your crafty desires. Uh, and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And until I see you next time, guys, stay safe. And I hope that you're healthy and well and your family is as well. And uh, take care and God bless. Bye, guys.